Greetings, Python coders. This is, once again, Alan D. Moore, and I am still the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a book that sails the seven seas of PyCute and returns with a bountiful booty of knowledge. Available from Amazon or from uh, the publisher, Pact Publications. In our last video, we looked at taking our application template that you see here and turning it into a GUI by using Qt Designer UI files. In this video, we're going to do the same thing, except we're not going to use Qt Designer files. We're actually just going to hand code this GUI. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, I can't do that. That's complicated. That's hard. I need a graphical interface to build GUIs. And I'm telling you right now, you're wrong because you're a smart person and this isn't that difficult. And in fact, if you're a beginner, I would really recommend taking this approach, especially with a simple GUI, because you're going to understand a lot more about the cute libraries and about coding GUIs and your code's going to be cleaner and a lot less convoluted. So soapbox aside, let's get started. I'm in my template here. And the first thing I'm going to do inside this init function is start creating widgets. Okay. So the first thing we need are labels. Let's say username label. And we're going to use a cute widgets Q label class with an argument containing the string that we want the label to have in it. We'll do the same for a password label. Now we need our inputs. So to do these, we're going to use a Q line edit. We'll start with the username. And we don't need any arguments there. Next, we'll do our password input, another line edit. Okay. Last of all, we need some buttons for the cancel button and the submit button. So for those, we'll use a Q push button. All right. And as an argument, we'll Put the text that appears on the button. Tell you what, we'll make that login. So those are our widgets. Now for our password input, any password input you've seen in the last 15 years will normally obscure whatever text that you enter in. We want that on our password input because we want to be safe. We don't want anyone looking over our shoulder to see our password. How do we do that? Let's uh, pop over to the browser. And we're looking here at the Q line edit class documentation. Now this is not Python documentation. This is the C++ documentation. Unfortunately for us, PyQt does not have comprehensive API documentation for all the classes. Instead, it directs us here to the C++ documentation. That's because PyQt is really just a thin wrapper around the Qt libraries. Okay, so more or less, we're just interacting with these C++ objects through Python. The downside here is that we have to kind of translate C++ to Python in our heads as we look at this documentation. Now there is also PySide, which is coming along in development and it has documentation and that may be more useful for us as that develops. Currently, I don't find that it's complete enough or nicely laid out enough um, for me. You can certainly check it out as well. But we're going to look at the cute documentation C++. And as we look down here at the list of properties, every widget has got properties that we can set and we can set these properties to change various attributes of 
our line edit. In this case, we want the echo mode property. So let's take a look at the echo mode property. All right, so we can see right here, we either want to set it to normal, no echo, password, or password echo on edit. All right, and what we want is just password, the standard password functionality. To actually set the value of echo mode, we need to use something called an accessor function. Accessor functions are something used in languages like C++ and Java that are highly object oriented. And they are simply methods that are used to either set or get the value of a property. Instead of like we would often do in Python where we just set it directly, um, these languages have special methods set aside uh, for setting these values. In Q, to retrieve the value, it's usually just the property name, which you call as a function. To set the value, it's usually set followed by the name of the property. So we can see these right here, these access functions, echo mode and set echo mode. Now the value we pass in shows us another C++ convention. So anytime Q needs to select between various options, it tends to use enums. A num is just a named value, usually just an integer in the background. But it's a named value so that you're passing in something that's explicit. So if we click on echo mode here, this is the enum for echo modes. And it's a property of the QLineEdit class we can see normal echo password. So we can see the values of these, they're just integers, right? So we could just pass in the number two, but we don't wanna be cryptic. We don't want magic numbers. So we're gonna be passing in this Q line edit password. Now this double colon is a C++ syntax in Python. We would just use it period. Let's go back to our code and let's see how that looks. So I'm going to call password input dot set echo mode. Remember, that's our accessor function. And then I'm going to pass in this value. Oops, sorry. Q line edit dot password. So this is the enum value that will set it to password mode. And that's all we need to do. Now, in PyQt, we also have the option of setting properties when we call the constructor. So we could say up here, echo mode equals Q widgets, Q line edit, password. That's another way you can do it. Although I will warn you that sometimes, for whatever reason, this way doesn't work. I don't know why, it's just kind of inconsistent. So unless I've got a lot of properties to set and I wanna save space, I'll just do it this way. We'll just use the accessor method and keep it like that. So that's all of our widgets defined. So let's head over to the terminal and we'll run our file. As you can see, we just get a blank window. Where are our widgets? Well, we've created our widgets, but just because they live inside of main window doesn't mean that main window knows to put them on the screen. What we have to do is we have to create a layout and we have to add our widgets to that layout. So we don't add widgets directly to another widget. We have to have this intermediary object called a layout. So I can create a layout and they live in the Qt widgets library. We'll create one called the QHbox layout. There are different layout classes and each of them has a different way of arranging widgets within it. The HBox is a very simple layout that just simply stacks widgets side by side from left to right as you add them. So then I can say layout.addWidget 
we'll say username label layout dot add widget we'll go ahead and add the input next username input layout dot add widget password label layout dot add widget password input all right now we've added them to our layout but we need to tell Qt that this widget's layout is layout so we do that by using an accessor method so we say self.set layout and we'll set it to that layout object now if we go back to our terminal here is our box and you can see things are just laid out horizontally side to side well that's not really what we want though let's try a different layout this time we'll try a V box layout or vertical box layout let's see what that looks like so this time the vertical box layout has stacked our widgets on top of each other but we don't really want that do we we would really kind of like our label to be next to our input and we certainly don't want our buttons stacked on top of each other there's a couple ways we can do that actually three ways we can do that one way we can do it is to nest layouts so we can create a second layout called username layout make it an hbox layout Whoa. make it an hbox layout we'll add our username components to the username layout then we can add our username layout directly to our layout so you can add layouts to other layouts but you cannot add widgets directly to widgets widgets have to be added to layouts layouts can be added to either a widget or to another layout let's see what that looks like oops ah we forgot our namespace so cute widgets dot qh box layout okay now you can see we have a nested layout here so this is inside this hbox layout is inside the vbox layout that's one way to do it another way we can do this is we can use a q grid layout all right so in a grid layout it's sort of like a table or a spreadsheet where everything's in a cell so when we call add widget we need to give it a row and a column so let's give that zero if we don't it will just add it to the next row so let's see what that looks like oh whoa 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 here we go Okay, actually, we don't need keywords here. So just positional arguments here. Guess I was thinking of another toolkit. Oops, and we need to remove our username layout. There we go. So this is our grid layout and you'll notice that it actually established that there were two columns in this grid and it just kept adding column after column so that's pretty good so that is maybe what we want but there's an even better option Qt has a layout called the form layout which is used for 
any kind of a form like this. So where you've got a label and then a widget, a label and a widget. And this is a great convenience layout because actually we don't even need to create label objects in this case. We use its add row method. We can specify the label text and then the input widget. That saves us a lot of coding. We can even just get rid of these labels up here. Again, let's try our file. Oh, and we've got something going on here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, yes, we don't need to add our password widget twice. Ah, there we go. Perfect. So apart from saving you some coding, another thing this does is it does uh, platform specific things as far as styling. So if you were to use this on Mac, uh, it would actually arrange things so that it looks like forms on Mac are supposed to look. Uh, same thing on Windows, Linux. It does platform appropriate things for forms. So anytime you have a form situation like this, I would recommend using that. All right, let's finish off here by adding in our buttons. So we can say layout add row. And um, what I want from my buttons is I want them to be grouped together horizontally under the inputs. So to do that, I'm actually going to put them on a widget. So I'll create another Q widget. I'm going to give it a horizontal layout. Okay, and notice I'm not assigning my layout a name here because I can always just retrieve it by calling the accessor function for the layout. So that's what I'm doing here. That's another way to do this rather than explicitly naming your layout. All right, so I'm going to add the cancel button. And I'm going to add the submit button. Finally, I'm going to add a row with a blank label and my button widget. And there we go. As you can see, my buttons are pushed over here under the inputs. I can type my username. I can type my password and it's obscured. I can click these buttons. So again, this is all the code that it took. It's not a lot of code. We could probably even make that a little bit smaller if we really wanted to. Um, like I said, if we if we didn't use our accessor methods, if we just use properties or keyword arguments here for the properties, but even so, this is not a lot of code and it's all right here. We don't have a second file to deal with. Again, if you like using Qt Designer, that's fine too. I just want to make the point that it's not that hard to hand code these things. It does take a little bit of reading of the documentation, but that's a healthy thing, I think for anybody learning to work with PyQ. So that's all we're going to do for now. In the next video, we're going to show you how to actually get these GUIs to do something, right? Uh, we're going to connect our inputs to some functionality. That's all for now. Again, do check out my book. There will be links in the description. I will have all the example code linked in the description. Um, Y'all have a great day. Do lots of coding. God bless.